All right, everyone. Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. The first cast of the Orchid Spider update. And we've got Alpenwell playing as the DAC. So you know he's going to try all the fancy mechanized tricks out. He's ranked number 15, 1758 ELO. And opposite him on the allied side is Mule from Hungary, ranked number 19 with USF. He's no slouch either. We'll see how he's going to approach this. Co-casting with me is my boy Tony, aka Floofy Dog. And that's it. This one is fun. It's short, but it has a lot of shows a lot of implications of the patch. Uh, and with that, let's just roll on to the match. All right, kicking this one off. Orchid Spider patch 1.90. We have Alpenwell playing as the DAC here in blue at the bottom of the screen, the west side of Twin Beaches, and he's rolling double crotchetson at the start. Opposite him is Mule, uh, one of Farage's buddies. He's no slouch himself playing as USF, and he immediately locks in armored, going barracks, getting an engineer out, as well as a jeep, going for the vehicle veterancy. So it looks like these players have read the patch notes, they've seen the reinforcement cost increase, and they said, screw that, we're playing with vehicles. Uh, Tony, what, what did you take away from the patch notes here? So definitely, uh, you know, Dak's probably my favorite faction. I find something to like about all of them, so I'm excited to try try that out and get a little more variety, you know, without feeling like I'm punishing myself from going off meta. Um, and I'm excited to see this one because I think Alpen Well is going to do something pretty similar to that um, with a double bike opener. I don't know if that's terribly common in these high level 1v1s, but. Um, I also expect to see uh, some 8-rat action, since that's gotten a, a cost nerf and the armor pen bonuses. So yeah, looking forward to seeing something that's a little less predictable. Yeah, I actually, I really like the changes they made to DAC. They made the side tech universal, so it works similar to Wehrmacht, and that if you side tech tier 2, you also get the side tech for tier 3. I think right. that makes, it's going to make DAC tier 3 more viable, even with the only other real change being the cost reduction to the 8-rod. Um, and I think both players, you kind of see, they're a little concerned about the potential bleed associated with running lots of mainlines. So you have one Panzer Grenadier squad and one rifle squad out right now. Um, and, and I think that's probably fair. I, I like this in theory because then you see more variety in the builds. You're not going to see five rifles and five Panzer Grenadiers. You're going to see a couple of infantry squads and you're gonna have to rely on them for their general utility, right? Basically the ability to fight infantry and uh, use snares. So um, I don't know that Mule has decided what he wants to do though, because he's floating a little bit of manpower here and he only has the one Jeep out. Um, go ahead. Right, right, yeah, you definitely see the, that early Jeep being a, a menace to those bikes, um, which is something that's kind of you know, at the kind of like middling level, if someone really knows what they're doing with a, a Vet One Jeep, an armored battle group. They can they can really harass you early game, and, and and I've I've definitely lost some games over not really knowing how to counter that early. So I'm curious to see how uh, Alpenwell deals with it specifically. Well, it's worth noting as well that the Jeep and the Krodschitzen now get experience for capturing points. Right. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because that's that's huge. Uh, huge difference. Now, do they get the bonus for decapping and capping? So, like, if you decap and recapture a point, that's double? Yes. Yes. It's, okay. le it's less for decapping. I think it's 50 for, for decapping and 100 for capping. Right. But it's also, it's not limited to one unit. So, uh, you can have a one crowd just into the majority of the capping. The other one shows up at the very end and they both get the experience. And you chain them. Okay, I was wondering about that earlier when I was reading. Now, you know, you, you lose the spread on the map, but I'm sure there's going to be some niche situations where people are going to be able to double dip. I mean, and, uh, what, what scares me is the idea of, like, Pathfinder spam, and they just farm right. veterancy by running around in one big Pathfinder blob together. Right. Now, if, yeah. if you can get the Vet 1 on these crowd shits and their tracer fire ability is still very strong, um... Alpenwell, so he is tacked, he built the light support company, and now he is just building a vanilla Panzerjäger squad. Which I think makes sense in dealing with the Jeep. Right. Yeah, because uh, if they're sitting in cover, they, they, you know, we know they, uh, 
I'm sorry, you said uh, PJ. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. That's that's. I know I've always felt the pressure when I see that early Jeep to just, you know, get to build tier one and get that PJ out rather than waiting, you know, another two minutes for the call in. And uh, so it looks like Appenwell is going to go for the mechanized company here. Meanwhile, Mule is going infantry support center and the weapon support center. So we may see some half track play. It's a it's a little conservative with the timing for that. Um, but since you can't build the half tracks without the uh, the support center choice anyway, it's probably fine. Nice mine. Suppresses the rifles. That's a big hit now. That's that mine is 60 manpower just killing two rifles right there. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's a good uh, indirect mine buff for sure. Then, uh, especially on those lead units. You know, I, I was playing someone earlier, and I don't really normally play Guasta, but I'd lost, I lost I want to say like three to one mine and. That's quite a bit of manpower, you know, uh, especially now in one nine. Yeah, here's the pioneers. Get the the flammenwerfer. That's gonna force those rifles away. Ri rifles in cover, taking more damage from the flames. And the pgrans benefiting from the uh, combined arms bonus from the crowd should send. And then also one of them has reached vet one. So now that tracer fire debuff hitting these rifles. Yep. And the DAC advance here is just too strong. The rifles yeah, are no. going to continue to bleed. Yeah, they're forced to run away, and the Panzerjäger is hunting this jeep. Yeah, Al is, uh, Alpenwell's been keeping those pgrens, you know, completely tied at the hip most of this game, it seems like. Just really, because, you know, even before this patch, the, the bleed will make or break uh, DAC more than the other factions, certainly. Yeah. Now, the downside is Mule has been able to capture this uh southern southwest fuel here um but you can look if you look at mule's resources fuel is no longer a problem for him but manpower seems to be very tight and i think that was also kind of the intent of relic with this patch is to make manpower more of a restrictive resource kind of across the board to be honest right and this is a this is probably the highest 1v1 map as far i'm sorry highest fuel 1v1 mm -hmm. map in rotation right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely extra point in the middle okay yeah. gotcha oh now the the eight rod hits the field and these engineers need to be careful the double tracer fire debuff oh wow the grease gun shred one of the crowd shits in bars pop for the rifles but they're out of position this engineer squad is going to take a lot of damage and now here come the panzer grenadiers on the flank now rifles show up engineers are going to get away with two and the panzer grenadier is forced to immediately retreat i that may be another side effect of this patch is the manpower bleed becomes so unsustainable that if you run into an engagement that you can't win you just immediately devolve into uh into hard retreats a little bit of a meta change because previously you would reward people for intelligently getting soft retreats off right and, and maintaining that map presence right now Alpenwell goes for the mg34 mule keeping his uh rifle platoon with captain kind of grouped together here and he's going for a half track now now the the base m3 half track got a significant buff to its MV, mg damage so it doesn't even necessarily need to spend the munitions on an upgrade to be effective or at least that's how it would appear in the patch notes now this half track is upgrading the 75 mil conversion and this is relatively meta from even the last patch is relying on these half tracks against dac uh, for some mid-game anti-infantry, anti-vehicle firepower. 8-Rod takes a round. I'm actually interested to see how the upgraded penetration on the 8-Rod deals with this half-track if it can get on its flank. I think it's, uh, especially if uh, Alpenwell ends up building a second one, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it cutting these down very, very quickly so that if you can get the jump on one of these half-tracks, and it has to slowly rotate and get you in its arc that there's there's just no chance you know maybe they get one shot off so i don't know maybe two a rats is going to be a critical mass to counter these half tracks yeah although alpenwell probably needs to prioritize healing next his pgrans have a decent model count skill but they're very low health oh this right. rifle squad gonna bleed quite a bit 
on retreat here could go down to the 8 rod. There's nothing coming the other way to help. The 75 mil comes back out. Has he tech? Uh, he hasn't tech grenades, so he can't snare the 8 rod. Oh, a shot misses. If he had activated target weak point, he might have been able to knock out this 8 rod here. One more shot will do it on the 8 rod. A second one is approaching on the flank. Smoke pops. With the 75 mil gonna kill one 8 rod and then immediately get flanked by the second. Oh, and meanwhile, Alpenwell lost his Panzer Pio squad to uh, a rifle squad on the flank. So maybe too much micro on the 8 rods there. Yeah, because he, I, I don't know if you noticed, but you almost couldn't see that there were two of them, but his two P-grounds were overlapping each other on that top VP, and I'm, I'm surprised he didn't pull one of them, especially a you know, player of his caliber didn't pull one of them to screen that 8 rat on retreat. Yeah, tough to manage that. Meanwhile, Alpenwell's right. getting a second 8 rod, and Mule's getting another half track. And Mule. Fantastic munitions control on the north side of the map with both of the massive munitions points. And now the jeep capping, although the 8 rod's about to make short work of this jeep. There's no <laughs> no escape here between the speed and the pen buff. Yeah, jeep goes down trying to cap that VP and get a triple cap on for Mule. Oh yeah, and That's he's got superior fire drills. That's done so. Yeah. I, yeah, he definitely needs healing, though. That's the one thing. He's got his Panzer Grenadiers back in headquarters, and they're just chilling because they, they can't afford to go out and risk getting lost. Oh, Scouts knocked out by the 8 rods. 75 mil comes in and does use the target weak point on one of the 8 rods, but it looks like the smoke will be used for the 8 rods to clear the area. 75 mil is going to chase. Another smoke popped. The 8 rods flip around. Can they flank? The 75 mil? It's basically a case made at gun. They're doing a lot of damage. Are there snares? Still no snares from Mule, so the, the 75 mil will kill one of the eight rods. It gets traded out. Another half track hits the field. And the eight rod pursues. Man, Mule, now he's finally teching grenades. I feel like that's overdue at this point. 8-Rod now hanging out in base. I think he's going to try to knock out this other half-track. That's a big pickup because of the fuel investment that goes into each half -track. They're 30 fuel each. Grenades still not available. Half-track goes down. And an engineer squad killed as well. To what? I, I, to be honest with you. Oh, it must have been the MG34 with the increased buff to the uh, MG damage. Now this 8-Rod... One sticky's gonna come in. It's engine critted. The next rifle squad on the way up. This will almost certainly spell the end of this 8 rod, but another one already in the queue. And for Mule, another half track in the queue. Wow. And so yeah, this will be the, the fourth 8 rod. So. Wow. Sticky knocks out the 8 rod despite the suppression from the MG34, and a single rifle gets away. So what do you think? Do you think this is indicative of the new meta, or do you think that this is just two players reading the patch notes and trying to adjust their strategy? I think for uh, Alpenwell, it's certainly you know trying the new uh, cheaper eight rads out. Because he's uh, pretty sure he prefers that out of all the factions, and he's probably tried everything there is to try. You know, over the you know close to two years that this has been out, so. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe this is, I don't know, because I've only been playing for, since 1.4. I don't know if this will be more of a throwback to more classic deck or if it's going to be familiar to any past metas or if it's uh, you know, entirely new ground. Obviously, a rad meta and for Wehrmacht was pretty dominant back in the summer, right? Mm hmm. You now it's a Dax turn for that. Yeah, I think it was more the Wehrmacht 8 rods felt so oppressive because they arrived so much sooner than the Dax. All right, so we see another 8-rod. So clearly, Alpenwell wants two 8-rods to impose the bleed on the rifle squads. Uh, and then meanwhile, we've got another 75 mil from Yule, but now he's unlocked the Easy 8 production. And so he doesn't have his Tier 4 up yet, but you imagine that's coming. He has the fuel, but he's short on manpower, which I think, honestly, as this patch goes, will probably be the story of most of these games. Just waiting on the manpower to get the units that you need out on the field. 
Right. Now, I wonder if he'll go for uh, Martyrs here and try to take advantage of that new, uh, what do the developers compare it to, like the um, Bersieri. Bersieri. Uh, oh, the, uh, the fast the, movement out of the Martyrs. Yeah, yeah. But but for Martyrs. Get well, around, scoot, scoot around the map a little bit if he sees the uh, Easy 8 show up. Now, Mule's gone for the Wrecker. And considering he has one half track uh, carcass in his base, I think that's a good choice. Uh, there's another eight rod, uh, relatively close. That if he, if before Alpenwell sees the record, he could probably pick that up. Meanwhile, Alpenwell now has a Panzerjäger half track to protect his eight rod investment here in the center. VP wise, still very much in Mule's favor. But KD wise, oh my sweet Jesus, I just looked at that. 42 to 15, so almost 3 to 1. And now Alpenwell also teching, uh, executing the side tech, so maybe he'll be able to also get a wrecker out and we can have a wrecker on wrecker uh, battle here, which, you know, Elf called me out the other day. I love the memes. Let's have wreckers recovering wreckers. You know, why not? Oh, the half track for the healing. Smart. Very smart. Now, I don't know if the Stug D is the answer here. I think the eight rods have plenty of anti-infantry firepower to deal uh, with the infantry that are on the field. But yeah, now the wrecker, he recovered one uh, 75 mil half track and now he's recovering the eight rod and Alpenwell is none the wiser. Yeah, I agree with the Stug D part, but as far as you know, new content, one nine, um, I think it was at Vet 2 or something that the uh, Stug D in particular for Dak is going to gain uh, even more armor, you know, on top of the the existing armor buff that it got in one uh, eight or whenever that was recently. So I, uh, I'll be curious to see how that performs if that's what ends up coming out. But yeah, that one I, I must have missed. Is that front armor only, or is that because I know the Brumbear at Vet three gets like plus sixty front armor? I'm gonna I'm gonna check while we're looking here because I got the, the notes to the side. All right, Mule bringing the Scott out as well as the 8-Rod. So this is actually a pretty formidable force here. Oh, wow. Immediate salvo from the 75 mils knocks out the Panzerjäger half-track and kills the Panzerjäger squad inside. So unfortunate roll of the dice there for Alpenwall. So the Stu D, uh, Vet 2, plus 40 <laughs> Panzer armor. Sorry, Panzerjägers have a flamethrower here. <laughs> So I'm sorry, go ahead. Stood D what? That two plus forty armor armor all facings. The wow. That's nuts. Now Alpenwell making use of the uh the changes to the side tech. He's got a pack thirty-eight here as well. White phosphorus barrage from the Scott comes in. But Alpenwell's countering this blob of vehicles with the armored uh Stuka anti-tank strafe. Immediately knocks out one half track. Here come the eight rods on the flank. It looks like they'll knock out the oh, plus the loiter knocks out the stolen eight rod. They go for the other anti tank half pack here. The Scott really helpless to do anything about this eight rod push. Half track goes down. The wrecker has reached triple vet, which is uh, you know, pretty cool. But the Scott is almost likely. Yep, Scott's going to go down here to the eight rods, and now the wrecker's being targeted. It was trying to repair the stolen eight rod. Oh man, it might survive just by its front armor. So the vet three wrecker's going to get away. One eight rod perilously close to dying. The other one chipping away at these rifles. Panzer grenadiers advance. They're forced away before they are uh, wiped. But the eight rods just doing a ton of damage to these rifle squads. And then on the flank here, the captain just kind of hanging out by the fuel point. Alpenwell going to back up and actually in his build order, doubling down, grabbing a third eight rod, which to be fair, um, can handle pretty much anything Mule has sent at him. Um, Mule really needs to get some sort of tank out, but he still hasn't built his tier four and because he chose the easy eight production, he needs that tier four building. Alpenwell also has a martyr in the queue. And now he's knocking out all of these vehicle wrecks because he clearly doesn't want uh, to give Mule a chance to claim anything else. 
Yeah, and your comment about like is this them just trying things out or do we see like a you know, this this patch is meta emerging already from, from these top players. And uh it'd be interesting if it ends up just kind of slinking right back to uh the white vehicle dominance that they were trying to mitigate you know, a couple patches ago, because we're what, almost twenty minutes in and we haven't seen a tank yet. Well, uh now that you've said it, uh Flomponser just hit the field. Nope. So, this is interesting, relying on the Martyr for AT, the Martyr in the Pack 38 the uh, eight rods to counter the light vehicles, and then a Flamponzer to go after the infantry. Meanwhile, Mule upgrading the Demolitions package, so he clearly thinks he's got to lay the big mine down, and I know how Jamie would feel about that. Alright, here comes another Alpenwell mechanized push here. Wow, these rifles just melt, and that's one squad gone. 75 mil half track moving up, uh, and one of the eight rods will be snared, but they're just too fast, and the auto cannon is too powerful. Scott knocked out by the pack 38, half track knocked out by the eight rods. Wrecker about to go down. Martyr, yeah, Martyr's gonna finish this Wrecker. The Flompanzer and the uh, eight rod go to clean up the infantry, and Mule throws the GG. And how about that for a first game of the patch here? All right, so going over the build order here, which again is really wonky. They don't even get into the late game units, but starting with Alpenwell, Panzer Pioneers, selects Armored Support Battle Group right away, then two Krodschitzen into two Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, really light infantry build, which honestly is probably based off the patch notes and the reinforcement costs. He goes tier two, the light support company, gets the squad of Panzer Jaegers out, then builds his tier three for the eight, gets his first eight rod, uh, gets an MG34 to deal with uh, Mule's infantry, basically throws it in a building to kind of suppress uh, infantry as they leave the base for Mule. Um, then goes for the vehicle survival package, pretty important for the eight rods. Then he builds four more eight rods. He's trying to keep two on the field uh, all at the same time. Uh, calls in the Panzerjäger mechanized group, so Panzerjäger and a half track. Goes great until that half track gets knocked out by a salvo and the Panzerjägers die in it. Rest in peace. Uh, then he gets the the pack 38 here uh, with the fire support elements. The flam Panzer three call in actually probably is what breaks this game wide open. And then a martyr three at the end to deal with the allied vehicles. Again, no tier four from him, relying heavily on tier three. Not something we saw a lot in the last patch, but something I think we're going to see more of this time around. For the battle group, initially he goes superior fire drills for the uh, machine gun damage bonus, really helps the crowd shits in. Then he goes salvage, he goes blitzkrieg, and then he gets that uh, armored and the Stuka and I tank loiter, and then unlocks the flam panzer at the end of the game there. All right, and now looking at Mule's build, which is a lot more meta based on the last patch until it isn't, right? So Starts the scouts, selects the armored battle group, gets engineers, builds a barracks, gets his jeep out to start capturing, and then three rifles. So not the four that you really saw in 1.8, but three there. So still pretty standard. The infantry support center leads to the captain. Um, and then he builds a weapon support center. And again, this is relatively meta against DAC, even from the last patch. The weapon support center with some of the upgraded half tracks, really good at countering DAC light vehicles and DAC infantry. Uh, text BARs, text the med station. Um, as we're going to talk about here, fuel not really an issue, especially on this map, uh, but the manpower definitely was. And then it's a series of the M3 half track city upgrades with the to the 75 millimeter gun motor carriage. Uh, I think at one point he finally has two on the field, but that's really because he gets the wrecker out and recovers some broken ones. Uh, text the grenade package really, really late. He definitely needed that sooner. Would have really helped with the eight rods and i think as soon as Alpenwell realized that he didn't have the grenades tech he just ran really aggressively over his infantry with the eight rods the recovery vehicle does help quite a bit keeping him in this game calls in a scott um and then text the demolitions package at the end of the game we almost saw the big mine but not quite game doesn't last that long so again no tier four here uh looking at the battle group immediately goes for the vehicle uh that one then the recovery vehicle, uh, then the rapid production, uh, which helps with the half tracks a little bit, unlocks war machine, uh, then goes for the Scott and then goes for the easy eight production, 
which I think ends up being a mistake here because he never gets tier four built. Sure, you'd save on manpower, but uh, and he honestly had the fuel. He just needed to stop building the half tracks and then losing them. Um, I think an easy eight would have really turned this game around for him, but he doesn't quite get it out uh, before his army is demolished by Alpenwell. And with that, we'll go grab Tony and we'll have a little bit more of a discussion about how this game went. All right, pretty wonky build orders, but uh, I'm back with the floofy dog, Tony. Uh, and all right, bro, what'd you learn from this? Well, certainly for Dak, it seems uh, that light vehicle action is uh, is going to be a lot stronger. Um, yeah. Certainly oh, yeah. less of a gamble. Um, I mean, it's still early. You know, we haven't we haven't seen you know more than a few hours of uh games but just uh you know alpenwell built five eight rads that game you know <laughs> eight minute game and um you know lost did he end up losing three of them or or yeah. just two but okay yeah, yeah and the, but still kept enough momentum to close it out i mean we just saw so many damn light vehicle wrecks all over the map there um so uh you know that combined with the uh you know the infantry reinforced going down as is our light vehicle is going to be dominant again i mean based on this right with the sample size of one uh i i think the answer is yes and and the right. reason <laughs> is um fuel is not the constraining factor now manpower is the constraining yeah. factor right and it's it's worth especially noting. on a fuel heavy map like that yeah, yeah right yeah. like uh so twin beaches high fuel high munitions um i think yeah the the rifles only three rifle squads but still you could see the bleed right because he hit like fuel was not his problem and then if you look at alpenwell you know 50 fuel per eight rod he built five of them that's 250 right there then the flamponser then the martyr he didn't have his neither player at the 20 minute mark had a tier four building up uh which is right. a little wild so I think we're back to uh, you kind of the mid game extending into the late game. A lot of like light and medium vehicles. Um, so it makes me wonder, you know, is the Stewart going to kind of have a resurgence here? Um, the biggest thing that we did not see was a lead infantry. And right. based on the patch notes, I think main lines got, got kind of hit with a nerf across the board but elites should be more viable. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if it would be interesting what mule would say of, you know, what he wish he would have done differently. Cause he had, he had enough rifle squad squads to provide a screen and, you know, maybe he was taking a gamble there, but not taking the grenades, especially, or, or maybe he was anticipating more of the, uh, the, uh, typical, you know, sit and cover with your P grins and LMGs type play. Um, that, that we had seen with with Dak, um, or maybe he has played some people, which you were asking about. Um, you know, I got a couple games in earlier, and and then mm -hmm. also talking to Colonel Otto, who did a lot of casting with you, and has been a huge coach and helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, the new walking Stuka is uh, incredibly <laughs> lethal, <laughs> oh, especially okay. yeah, once yeah. it vet, and when it vets that ones, you, there's separate cooldowns between the normal barrage and the in the creeping barrage. Oh, so if you have the munitions, so, you just annihilate right people. Yeah. yeah so i i wonder i wonder if he was expecting something a little more campy that would have uh taken advantage of that you know absolutely lethal and direct by late game yeah. um you know i don't know if that was if you know he necessarily would have made that calculation on that map but you know something on like a famonville or whatever where you're going to be able to reach everything of consequence in the map barely leaving your base you know i think we're going to see a lot of that in places like there and some yeah, I, I think we're going to see a lot more weapon support center play from the U.S. as well. I can't help but think because the DAC with all their combined arms bonuses, they play better together, right? Like kind of clumped up. And I can't help but think if early game, the, the 1919 with, uh, with some of its buffs and the fact that DAC really don't get an early HMG counter, right? The LEIG doesn't come until, you know, five or six minutes uh, at the right. earliest. If that's not a good opening counter to Dak. Um and so, you know, I'll keep looking for replays, but I would not be surprised if USF first Dak goes scout into weapon support center into potentially like 
terrors or commandos for your anti-infantry and ignores rifles in the barracks altogether. Yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting to see a lot of that in one v one. Um, you know, team team games. That's that's all too common, but um, you know, de- definitely off meta in ones. Yeah. Um, I'll be I'll be interested <laughs> to see uh, some more Greyhound action too. Of that, what what is it? The raider ability at Vet One. So yeah. armor battle groups going to be able to pick that. You can decap, but you can't cap, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, uh, but for a cutoff play, play some, oh, Pacino yeah. stalemate. Can you imagine oh, yeah. having a Greyhound with Vet One Raider on Pacino? Like your opponent will have no fuel ever for the game. I'm sh- I'm sure I will lose to it at some point. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think it's one of those things. Like, be careful what you ask for. Like, we begged for USF build diversity, and now we're right. about to get. Oh, you built rifles. Sorry, you lose. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else before we uh, we cut this one off? No, I I don't think so. Uh, you know, short, short and sweet, fast, aggressive game. Um, you know, high risk, high reward type play. And uh, Alpenwell came on top. GG to both of them. And thanks for having me. Yeah, good game. Well played. No love lost between uh, both competitors, but an entertaining <laughs> game for us to watch and cast. Um, looking forward to seeing where the meta progresses here. It's high time right before the holiday season. American Ramadan, if you will. Um, so looking forward to many, many more of these, but that's going to do it for us here and we'll see y'all in the next one.